difficult in this bowler with a co-creator of Isabella's star, David Cena. And I thought, what better time to show you our close-up variation of the stuff that we created. So I grabbed a local from the barbecue over here, if you just take a look. I brought her down here. So this is her, Sarah. I'm Pete. So, for the viewers at home, I literally just grabbed you from the barbecue, brought you over here. You've not met before. I'm not asked you to write anything down and you don't know what I'm about to ask you? No. No, okay. I told you a little bit about what I did. I said that I analyse behaviour mm -hmm. and I look at people's characteristics and the choices they make to be able to determine what they did in the past, to work out what they're doing presently and to be able to hopefully help them out to tell them what they're going to do in the future. Mm -hmm. Yeah? So, what are you doing at this moment in time? I'm a student. Student. What are you a student? Chemical engineering. Chemical engineering. You've done that for a long time? Five years now. Quite a long time. Yeah. Okay. Did you always want to do that or is that something that you just got into recently? Yeah, it's recent. Recent, so just the last five years? Yes. Okay, just a future choice to ensure that you have a nice future, yeah. yeah? Okay. Would you be impressed if I could tell you what you wanted to do as a child? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Generally when we're children we get forced into something by our parents mm -hmm. and they make us want to do something. And I think that was the case here, yeah? Yeah. Right, okay. Because what you're doing now is mentally testing, and because you were pushed into something as a child, I think when you got your independence that you took a diverse route. So as a child, I think this would have been more physically demanding. Yeah. You can see the logic there. Yeah, it's definitely fine. It makes sense. That's, that, you know, that's quite logical thinking. Yeah. But it's not exact. Okay. I think with you it would have been a, a sport of some kind, but I'm not thinking like a, a sport as in like football or hockey. So I think this would be more something like acrobatics or gymnastics. Yeah. Um, you wanted to teach? Yeah. Che gymnastics. Teach gymnastics. Fantastic. Yeah. And that's how it works. And I look at you, I predetermine the things that you're thinking, and I try to intuit, based on the things that you're doing presently, what you did in the past. Now, do you believe in mediums? Fortune tellers? Mm -hmm. And palm readers? Mm -hmm. Now, I've been about Portugal and I've seen that there's a lot of Romanian gypsies that are over here and they they do the palm readings and yeah. stuff and I'm going to get into Romanian gypsies in a minute because I know that they're not well liked over here. <laughs> okay, but um, I'm not going to read your palm for you, I'm going to get you to read your own palm. Okay. Okay, so if you just take your palm, you need to take a look at it and just look here. And in your mind's eye, I want you to imagine seeing a number. Okay? Okay. Just in there. And tell me when you've got one in mind. Yes. Okay, drop your hand down for me. Now bear in mind this could be any random number. Mm -hmm. There's no way I can know what it is. So if I ask you just to intuit on a big screen, see it projected up there for me. You, you love singing, don't you? <laughs> yeah. Yes. So just lift your chin and just imagine singing it. Singing that number out loud. So everybody in this entire park can hear. Okay. Yeah, would this be the number seven? <laughs> yes. Is that it, yeah? Yeah. Fantastic. And that works based on me being able to intuit the choices that you're going to make. Now you've heard of the SP symbols, like the star, the cross, the other lines, yeah. Mm -hmm. They were used by Joseph Ryan in the 1930s to test for psychic phenomena. In the 1920s onwards, you know what they did? To test for psychic phenomena. Mm -hmm. They used playing cards. Mm -hmm. So what would happen is they'd invite a sitter, so that would be you, the conductor would hold up a playing card and the sitter would try to intuit what the card was. Okay? Mm -hmm. So now I'm going to try to transmit something to you. So I'm going to take a playing card, like this, it's right here, and if you were to try and intuit what it was, but not say it out loud, tell me when you think you've got a playing card in mind that you think this could be. Okay. Okay. Now be honest, did you change your mind at the last second? Yeah. Yeah. You only went for a suit change though, you just jumped from a diamond to a heart. Yes. Yeah. Would I be right in saying that you think this is a queen of hearts? Yeah. <laughs> So you intuited what card I pulled out, yeah. and that's amazing because you've never done that before. No. But that shows you how our thoughts are now sort of in sync, combined. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now going back to Romanian gypsies, my grandmother was a Romanian gypsy. Funnily enough, um, I know that you don't like tourists. You call us beefs. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. yeah and, that's you, right. and you don't like Romanian gypsies. So I, this is a bad mix to start with, you know. But my grandma, she said that our life was mapped out for us in the stars. Do you know about Pythagoras? Mm -hmm. Pythagoras said that everything had numerical relations 
and it was up to the mind to seek and investigate the secrets of those relationships or have them revealed by divining grace. And I'm going to try to show you what he meant by that. And hopefully, if I'm doing this right, I'll be able to show you what my grandmother did. Mm -hmm. Now, she used to read futures and palms and fortune tell, but her strength was being able to guess the exact day and month that somebody was born. Now, she wasn't obviously my real grandmother, but my granddad was an antiquities dealer and he moved to Romania. Mm -hmm. He met her, he looked across the gypsy pasture, he'd seen her, he smiled at her, she smiled and then she fled. Exactly, that's, to us that seems like such an insignificant thing, but to him that was a life-changing experience because it gave him the courage he needed to make her fall in love with him. Several months passed and then they moved back to England mm -hmm. and I always knew her as grandmother, she was called Isabella. Okay, and she always told me these wonderful stories, these fantastic stories of people reading palms and seeing colourful dreams and being able to tell people's futures. And it was absolutely amazing when I was a child to hear these stories, but as I grew older, my passion for the stories dwindled. I thought it was a lot of bullshit, to be fair, but that's neither here nor there. And it wasn't until a few years ago when she was on her deathbed that she took my hand, just like I'm going to take yours, and she said to me, never forget that we start our existence as a star, and that when our life fades, we become the brightest star in the sky for a short period of time. And that's such a lovely sentiment, mm -hmm. you see? Now the amazing thing is, that I learned from that that life is the biggest mystery of all. If you just turn your hand around for me. And our own world is here. And all the small, insignificant things that have no relevance suddenly become relevant. All of this started from one smile. It led me to being in Portugal, to being in this park, in Lisbon, mm -hmm. to meeting you. And all of a sudden you can see how these things become relevant. Mm -hmm. So what I see when I'm looking at you in your own world here, is I see there's several subconscious memories floating around here. Mm -hmm. okay? And there's just one that's standing out more in particular than the rest. And this is somebody that looks like you, but I think they're a bit younger, maybe short hair. Uh, you know who this person is, yes? Yes. Okay, in this memory I'm seeing that maybe at the age of about 17, 18. Mm -hmm. Who is this? My sister. How old is she? She's 18. 18, yeah. fantastic. See, that's amazing. We're really on the same path here. So if I told you to just think of your sister, just open your mouth like this, take a deep breath in, and just imagine saying the name to me. Imagine saying it. Yeah. Just be like Mari, Mari, Mary. <laughs> Mara. Mara, very close. Yeah, it is a Portuguese name. Portuguese name, and again, there's no way I could have known that. No. No. The thing that I'm seeing about your sister here, is I think she really looks up to you. Okay? And it, as you instantly thought about this person first, I think that you really love her and you take care of her. Um, and maybe she looks up to you that much that the thing she does now is similar to the sort of thing you did as a child. A sport of some kind. Yeah. But I don't think she wants to make it obvious that she looks up to you. So she probably went for a different kind of sport, maybe hockey or volleyball? Yeah, volleyball. Volleyball, fantastic. Now you could put this down for a second. Do you know what an astrological number is? No. An astrological number is what astrologers use to determine how our life's going to be, how our characteristics and traits are. And you've heard of like Gemini, Scorpio. Yes. And you've read that each one of these individual signs depict how we are as a person. Mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you how to work out matters astrological number. Now it's essential you don't say anything out loud. Okay? Mm -hmm. So I want you to think of the day Maru was born, so for example the second, mm -hmm. and double that number. Mm -hmm. Yes. And then I want you to take the month, for example January being one, February two, March three, so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. and I want you to take the month number and put it onto the top of the double number. Okay. You've done that for me? Yeah. Right, okay. Just remember that number, because that's going to be important to you and to Mara. Okay? Mm -hmm. And now I want you to imagine the playing card suits. And I don't know if you know this, but the playing card suits depict people's characteristics. So for example, a club would be a bubbly personality, very enthusiastic. Mm -hmm. A diamond would be sharp-witted and intelligent. The spade would be quite mysterious. Mm -hmm. And the heart would be very loving. Could you think of one of them suits to best describe Mara, but don't say it. Okay. You've got that? Yes. So I want you to take Mara's astrological number and the suit to get either one playing card or two playing cards. So for example, if it was 12, 
it would be an ace and a two. That would be one and two, that would say twelve. Mm -hmm. And if she were mysterious, it would be the ace of spades and the two of spades. Do you understand what to do? Yeah. So I'm going to give you a deck of playing cards, you're going to go through, and if it was twelve, you'd take out the one and the two. Okay. Do you understand mm -hmm. that, yeah? Yeah, And the suit that best depicts matter. Okay. There you are. So I'm going to turn away while she do that. Yeah. Try not to show it to the camera or to me, just keep, you know, look at them and keep it well hidden. Yeah. Put the deck down here when you've done. And then we'll go down here. And when you've got the card, just hold it like this, so the cards. Yes. Did it? Yeah. Did it face down? Yeah. I really want you to concentrate on this. Put your hand on top, so I don't want you thinking there's any funny business here. So there's no way I can see into there, unless I could see through your hands, which is... There's not. Okay. So, would you be impressed if I could tell you a little bit about Mara? Yeah. yeah, I've never met Mara. No. You've never mentioned her to no. me. This is the first time again that. Yeah. Yeah. So, really concentrate on when Mara was born. I want you to imagine seeing Mara. I want you to imagine her on her birthday, and there's loads of X's on the calendar, but there's just one circle on the date she was born. Can you imagine whether the day is odd or even? And just imagine it once more for me. We're going to come back to that because I'm struggling with that a little bit. Can you imagine the month in the air here? And as you see the month in the air, just imagine the first letter. And imagine repeating this in your mind over and over and over again. Now see the second letter. You see, now this is easier to visualise because you've already visualised the first, meaning this one's a lot stronger and you're screaming this one in your mind over and over, just like A, 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 over and over again like that, yeah? Yeah. Okay. I want you to concentrate on seeing the day. Ah, okay. See now the visualization process have got a lot easier. This tells me that this would be even. Yes. Yes, okay. Now be honest with me, was Mara born on the 4th? Yeah. Yeah, the 4th of January? Oh, yes, exactly. Exactly, yeah. Now we're going to do something that's a little bit more out there. I want you to imagine that you get to take Mara somewhere, okay? Mm -hmm. It's not a place that actually exists, we're going to create this place. Okay. So I want you to imagine that you start on a rainbow, mm -hmm. okay? And you can see the colours red, yellow, pink, green, orange, purple and blue. Yes. And I want you to imagine that these colours are paints. Mm -hmm. And you reach down and you take a paint out, so if you took green, you'd paint a landscape using green. So it could be like this park or a field. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If you took out pink, you might imagine a field of flowers. Mm -hmm. So imagine red, yellow, pink, green, orange, purple or blue. Choose one of them, take it and paint a landscape using that colour. Mm -hmm. Someone you've got somewhere? Yeah. See it up here and again just lift your chin up. Up here. Now the strange thing that I'm seeing is that there's generally people here, but there's not in the pictures that you've painted. That tells me there's some sort of social stress going on at this moment in time. Yeah. Are you recently taking exams? Yeah, I finished my exams yesterday. That's it? Okay, yeah. yes. Um, <laughs> let me see it up here. Okay. So I think this place would be quite a serene place. Now, would, we, would I be right in saying that I'm seeing lots of water? Can you imagine the feelings as if you're in this place with Mara? So, okay, I'm feeling a nice warmth, so this would be quite a hot place. Would you be feeling sand underneath your feet? Yes. Yeah. Yes, okay. So you'd be on a beach looking out. And would I be right in saying there's only one boat here? Yeah? yeah? Can you imagine that somebody on that boat drops off a bottle? Yes. And you see that bottle come towards shore? Mm-hmm. And you ask Mara to pick up that bottle, and she looks inside. Do you know what's inside the bottle? No. No, there's one playing card. Yeah, you know where this is going. <laughs> yeah. There's one playing card inside that bottle. And as I look in it and I see it, and I'm holding it in the air here, there's a nine of hearts in there. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Should have come with a lot of hearts. 
It was crazy. I <laughs> I was having barbecue with my friends and then a man with tattoos came up <laughs> and asked me if I could help him. And I said yes. It was unbelievable. I never seen something like that here in Portugal. He was stealing my thoughts, I think so. I don't know how can he manage to guess my sister's name and his, her, her birthday. Well, it was crazy, man. <laughs>